Okay, this is a quick video on how to determine intervals of increasing or decreasing on a graph using calculus. So how do I determine where a function is increasing and where a function is decreasing in calculus? So for example, find the intervals. Let me type this in here. Find the intervals where, oops, where the function is increasing and decreasing. Okay, so let's call this part A. f of x is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 4, okay? Now, increasing and decreasing is a rate of change, and a first derivative is a rate of change. So you're always going to find the first derivative first. So step one, find, let's just say steps, steps to find increasing and decreasing. First, find f prime of x, find the first derivative. So in this case, my first derivative is 2x minus 3. If you're not sure how to find the derivative of this, you're going to need to take a look at one of my other videos, derivation, and practice that. Because you're going to have to be able to take the derivative of any function that you're given. So my first step is to find the first derivative, and the second step is to set it equal to 0. Solve for x. So how do I solve for x, right? I'm going to add 3 to both sides. I get 2x is equal to 3, and then divide by 2, x is 3 halves, okay? These are also called critical values. Anything that comes from where the first derivative is equal to 0 is called a critical value. So you actually also just found what we call a critical value, and this one has only 1. Step three, place your critical values, okay, I'm going to call them CVs, on a, I call it a F prime number line. F prime number line. So I'm going to put a number line here. This is going to be called F prime, and this is going to be my critical value down here, right, below the number line. Next, I'm going to choose test points. Choose test points along this interval, so to the left and to the right of your critical value. So let's pick a number to the left of 3 halves. 0, right? 3 halves is 1.5. 0. You choose 0 if it's easy. To the right, how about 2? Two? 2 is another number. Now once I use these guys up here, they're done. I throw them away, okay? I just want to use them to determine what's happening with the first derivative, okay? You're going to take the test points, plug your test points into f prime, into your first derivative. You just want to know what the sign is when you plug them in. So here, I'm going to take 0 and plug it into my first derivative. When this is 0, I get 2 times 0 minus 3. I get a negative outcome. If the first derivative is negative, then you are decreasing. Right? A negative rate of change. Negative first derivative. Decreasing. Plug in. Let me make sure that you can see that again. Next, I'm going to plug in my second test point. What's my second test point? 2. I'm going to plug it into the first derivative, and I just want to know, am I going to get a positive or negative outcome? 2 times 2 is 4, minus 3 is positive. If the first derivative is positive, I am increasing along that number line. 
Again, I'm going to take test points. What do I care? I care if those test points are positive, when I plug them in, positive or negative in the first derivative. If it's positive when I plug it into the first derivative, that tells me I'm increasing along that interval. If it's negative, that tells me I'm decreasing along that interval. And you're typically going to write your intervals in interval notation. So here is my interval where the function is increasing and where the function is decreasing. It is increasing along this interval to the right of 3 halves. So from 3 halves to positive infinity. Always open. Always parentheses, okay? Never close intervals. Always open intervals. Remember I said that we're going to use these test points and throw them away. The value down here is what goes into my intervals. Once I use 0 and I plug it into the first derivative, I don't care about it anymore. Only these guys down here, the critical values, are going to go into my intervals. Where is the decreasing? To the left, right, of 3 halves. From negative infinity to 3 halves. So find the intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing. It is increasing from 3 halves to positive infinity and decreasing from negative infinity until I reach 3 halves. Here's my answer. Again, what do we do? First step, find the first derivative. Set the first derivative equal to 0 and solve for x. These are your critical values, whatever you find when you solve for x. Place them on an f prime number line. Choose test points. Put them on top of the number line so you don't confuse it with the numbers that go into your intervals. I call it a f prime number line because I'm plugging the test points into the first derivative. If it's positive, then I'm increasing. If it's negative, then I'm decreasing. So let's do another example. Same thing. Find the intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing. So here is, um, here I'm going to make it up, 1 half, actually, let's do 1 third x to the third minus 5x squared plus 21x minus 3. Again, I want to find the intervals where the function is increasing and decreasing. Step 1. Find the first derivative. f prime of x. So in this case, 3 times 1 third is 1x squared minus 5 times 2, 10x, plus 21. Find the first derivative. Set it equal to 0, right? Find the first derivative, then set it equal to 0, and solve for x. Now, yes, this became a quadratic equation, so therefore, to solve for x, I have to know how to factor. Again, if you don't know how to factor, you're going to need to check out my factoring video. x times x, 7 and 3, plus a minus a minus. So negative 7x, negative 3x is negative 10x, and then negative 7 times negative 3 is positive 21. That works. So I'm going to get, when I set each of these equal to 0, a 7 and a 3. I have two critical values now. Take the first derivative, set it equal to 0, solve for x. Place them on an f prime number line. So now I'm going to place two critical values, always from least to greatest on what I call an f prime number line. And they're going to go down here on the bottom, least to greatest. One critical value, two critical values. These are the guys that are going to go into your interval when you write your increasing and decreasing interval. Pick points in between to the left and to the right. Pick a test point that's less than 3, 0. Pick a test point between 3 and 7, 4. Pick a test point greater than 7. 8. We're going to plug them into the first derivative. I personally like to plug them into the factored case, right? Kind of ignoring this. Because all I care about is the sign. So if I plug in 0 here, I get 0 minus 7. I get a negative outcome, right? When I plug 0 in here, negative. When I plug 0 in here, I get also a negative outcome. So if I plug 0 all together, I get a negative times a negative, which is a positive. So the first derivative is positive in this interval or increasing. Now I'm going to plug in 4. 
into my factored case. And when I plug in 4 to the first part, 4 minus 7 is negative. When I plug 4 into the second part, 4 minus 3 is positive. So I'll get a negative times a positive, which is negative. So I'm negative in the first derivative along this interval, or decreasing. I'm going to plug 8 into the first derivative here, the factored one. When I plug 8 into the first part, I get 8 minus 7, which is positive. I'm going to plug 8 into the second case, 8 minus 3, which is also positive. So I'll get a positive times a positive or a positive outcome, and therefore I'm increasing along that interval. Right? Again, I'm plugging these values into my first derivative. I like to plug it into my factored case because I don't really care about the outcome. I'm saving time. I care about the sign of the outcome. I don't care about the number. So if I plug in 0, I get a negative times a negative. 0 minus 7 is negative. 0 minus 3 is negative. Negative times a negative is positive, so I'm increasing. I plug 4. 4 minus 7 is negative. That's what I wrote here. 4 minus 3 is positive. Negative times a positive is negative. Plug in an 8. 8 minus 7 is positive. 8 minus 3 is positive. Positive times a positive is positive. Increasing. Once I use these test values, I don't care about them anymore. They're done. I use the guys, the critical values along this here, on the bottom of the um, number line, oops, to determine why does that happen? I don't use these test points anymore. Once I'm done with them, once I plug them into the first derivative, I only use these guys on the bottom of the number line, the critical values, to go into my increasing and decreasing intervals. Where In interval notation, where is this function increasing? Over here, from left to right, from negative infinity until it reaches Z, uh, 3. Always these guys down here are going into this interval, negative infinity to 3. But also, to the right of 7, from 7 to infinity. And how do I say it here and here? You're going to see this union. This union is like saying and. It's like saying this interval and this interval is where it's increasing. Where is it decreasing? It starts decreasing here at 3. And then it continues to decrease until it reaches this other critical value, 7. Notice that it's all parentheses, always open intervals when you're doing increasing and decreasing intervals. Okay, again, only these critical values, these numbers on the, on the bottom of this um, number line, go into the intervals down here. You're never going to put the test numbers in your interval, so be careful. That's a typical mistake that students use, or students do. Only the guys on the bottom here go into the intervals. All right, let me know if you guys need more difficult um, examples. I'll probably do another video with more difficult um, situations. Don't forget that these are basic derivatives. Chain rule applies, product rule applies, quotient rule applies, but the idea here is the same. So I'll do more videos with more complicated situations, but if you need any particular situation, you have to let me know, comment, so that I know and I can do a video for you. All right, good luck, guys.